This is Valley News Live at 4. Breaking news this afternoon of a school shooting in Tennessee. Here's a live look of the school right now in Knoxville. The news broke just about a half hour ago, so there are few details, but police say there were multiple shooting victims at Knoxville High School, including a police officer. The Knox County Sheriff's Office communications director said there is no active shooter threat at this time. Stick with Valley News Live as we continue to follow this story throughout the evening. Another shooting, this one a bit closer to home. It's gaining national attention as police in a Minneapolis suburb released the body cam footage from the officer involved in Sunday's deadly shooting of a young black man during a traffic stop. The chief told reporters he believes it was an accidental discharge. And while he described the video as graphic and unedited, he says the public needs to see it. CBS's Jamie Yukas has more from Minneapolis. Body cam footage reveals a Brooklyn Center police officer yells taser multiple times before firing her handgun and fatally shooting 20 year old Dante Wright. Taser, taser, taser. Chief Tim Gannon told reporters he believes the officer, described as very senior, intended to deploy her taser. This appears to me, from what I viewed and the officer's reaction and distress immediately after, that this was an accidental discharge that resulted in the tragic death of Mr. Wright. Police say Wright was pulled over for an expired registration. Officers then determined there was an outstanding arrest warrant and tried to arrest him. Wright is seen getting back into his car and then the officer fires. The car traveled several blocks before hitting another vehicle. He didn't deserve to be shot and killed like this. The incident occurred just 10 miles from where the murder trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is underway. We are in pain right now. And we recognize that this couldn't have happened at a worse time. The shooting sparked violent protests overnight and clashes with police. The chief defended the use of flashbangs and tear gas to try to break up the group. We had to disperse the crowd because we can't allow our officers to be harmed. An investigation into the officer is underway and she's on administrative leave. I think we can look at the video and, and ascertain whether or not she'll be returning. The department is bracing for more protests tonight. Jamie Yukas, CBS News, Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, along with the mayors of Minneapolis and St. Paul, have announced a state of emergency and enacted a curfew in the Twin Cities metro counties for tonight. The curfew begins at 7 this evening, runs until 6 tomorrow morning. Governor Walz spoke today about the shooting at a joint press conference with Minnesota law enforcement. It goes without saying that it's devastating and heartbreaking that we're here once again to, to address the, uh, the death of a young black man with an interac interaction with police. As the world is watching during the, uh, the trial of Derek Chauvin for the death. Governor Walls and law enforcement officials say violence and property damage will not be tolerated. Governor Walls spoke with President Joe Biden earlier, who weighed in on the shooting, calling for calm, uh, calm while the investigation unfolds. But I think uh, we got to wait and see what the investigation shows uh, and the entire investigation. But in the meantime, I want to make it clear again, there is absolutely no justification, none for looting no justification for violence. The Minnesota Twins are postponing their game against the Boston Red Sox. They released a statement that says, in part, the Minnesota Twins have decided it is in the best interest of our fans, staff, players, and community to not play today's game. They also offered their sympathies to the family of Dante Wright. The Minnesota Wild and the Timberwolves have also postponed their games. More breaking news this afternoon, this time out of Devil's Lake. Police there say over 60 cars were vandalized over the weekend. 18-year-old Winfield Chasky has been arrested in the case, as well as a 15-year-old. Both are being held on burglary, criminal mischief, minor consumption, and unlawful entry charges. Detective Sue Schwab says if your vehicle was damaged, you are asked to call police right away to report it. We are bracing for a wintry mix to hit the region. We're already getting the rain, but it's snow that could cause problems for a lot of folks. Let's head right over to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson for the latest on two first alert weather days. Hey, Hutch. 
Hey, thanks so much, Andrea. As we take a look at the, uh, well, look at the live sky cam now. Here in South Fargo at I-94 and University, flakes are flying indeed in the FM area as we speak. Now, as we take a look, uh, we are expecting some uh, conditions to be impactful. And by morning, some of our northern commuters will have some snow that will be on the roads to deal with. And then tomorrow and the afternoon after snowing for much of the day, at least on and off again, we're going to have some very significant snowfall totals up north we could see more than six inches in many locations. Here's a look at Cavalier today. You're getting a little bit of a break right now, but a coating on grassy areas. And this is a look at the Highway 2 corridor near Leeds where the snow showers continue. Hey, much needed moisture from Minot through the Grand Forks area, but look at that batch of precipitation heading right into the FM area now as we approach drive time. It's much quieter to our south and to our west. Winter weather advisory for tonight until tomorrow night for the county shaded in blue. It does not include the I-94 corridor. This is where most of the accumulating snow is expected to be. Look at this. It's already in the 20s and that means road surfaces will get cold tonight and that snow will accumulate on road surfaces by morning. I'll have hour by hour details coming up here in just a few minutes on exactly how much snow you're going to get in your portion of the valley, but you know, it's much needed moisture mm -hmm. and I'll have details on all of that in a minute. Okay, thanks such. And remember to download the Valley News Live weather app to stay up to date on the latest forecasts and conditions. All you have to do is search VNL weather in the app store. New for you now at four, a motel in Grand Forks has been deemed unsafe and everyone inside has been ordered to stay out of the building. Back in March, Grand Forks police received a complaint regarding the Ambassador Hotel. That complaint was forwarded on to the Grand Forks Inspections Department, and after inspecting it, the motel was determined to be a dangerous structure. The city is now working with the Northlands Rescue Mission to help provide assistance to those who need it. A man from Devil's Lake is in jail, and court documents say he sexually abused three girls. 60-year-old Howard Studhorse is charged with six felony counts of gross sexual imposition. Court documents say Studhorse forced two girls, ages 12 and 13, to engage in several different sex acts with him. Documents state five of the incidents happened between March 22nd and March 23rd of this year. His bail has been set at $250,000. A boy is expected to be okay after being ejected from an SUV. The crash happened Saturday night in Crookston. Witnesses told police the vehicle was speeding on a city street, then veered into a park where it rolled. Several people were seen running from the area. Officials determined there were three boys in the vehicle around the ages of 16 or 17. 18-year-old Pablo Salinas Jr. was also in the SUV. Fire crews are still working to figure out the cause of another fire that broke out near the former Mid-America Steel Building in downtown Fargo last night. Firefighters say they found the fire in a large shed directly behind the steel building around 10 o'clock last night. The plant caught fire last month, and investigators say it was arson. There's no word yet on how last night's fire started. The trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin entered its third week with more testimony from medical experts and emotional testimony from George Floyd's family. The prosecution is expected to wrap up its case shortly. Elise Preston has the latest from New York. The brother of George Floyd told the jury in the Derek Chauvin trial a little about his brother. He was a big mama's boy. You know, every mother loves all of her kids, but it was so unique how they were with each other. A cardiologist who reviewed Floyd's death also took the stand Monday to dispute a key defense argument. George Floyd did not die from a primary cardiac event and he did not die from a drug overdose. Dr. Jonathan Rich echoed previous medical testimony, blaming Floyd's death on the actions of former police officer Derek Chauvin. It was caused by low oxygen levels and those low oxygen levels were induced by the prone restraint and positional asphyxiation that he was subjected to. The defense tried to shift the blame onto Floyd. If he had gotten in the squad car, he'd be alive. Earlier in the day, the judge refused a defense request to sequester the jury in light of the police killing of a black man Sunday, just outside Minneapolis. I understand the argument from the defense that this now puts them in even more uh, ill at ease. But I think sequestering them would only aggravate that. The judge said he expects well, closing arguments to begin next week. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Next witness is at one. 
The defense is expected to call its own medical experts after the prosecution wraps its case. The defense has not yet set whether Chauvin will take the stand. Tonight, Dilworth City leaders will consider a proposal to limit the number of pets per household using a microchipping program. The proposal calls for no more than four or more dogs or cats or a combination of both. We'll have a crew at tonight's meeting and we'll bring you the latest on Valley News Live. Clay County Public Health is holding a vaccine clinic for those who are 18 years and older. It's scheduled for tomorrow from 11 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon at the Yumcomst Center in Moorhead. You must set up an appointment and to do that you can head to our website valleynewslive.com and click on this story for a link to register. If you're looking for a side hustle that offers some flexibility, we know a company that's hiring. Those details are next. And we have snow taking place right now in the FM area, and some could have some serious shovel trouble as we go into the day tomorrow. Your hour-by-hour -hour forecast includes, well, a little sunshine. I'll tell you all about it right after this.